All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash the and Fun Out. Back at it with another throwback tunes on another Thursday, and I am doing something different this time around. And you could say it's a little bit controversial. So obviously you see the cover right here. This is Trail Play by R. Kelly. And a few months back, he was in the news for not good reasons, but despite that, he still made good music. Like, you can't deny that. You cannot deny that. So, I am reviewing Trail Play by R. Kelly. So, this joint came out November 9th, 1993. It was recorded from 1992 up to 1993. And this was done under Jive Records. So, the producers involved were Barry Hankerson, who was the executive producer. R. Kelly and Timmy Allen were the other producers. And that was it. That was pretty much it in regards to this album. A little bit of background info for this album. So, check this out. And, oh yeah, before I get into that, this is actually interesting, the debut studio album for R. Kelly. So he came out with an album prior to this, but we'll get, I'll explain that in a second. It's called Born Into The 90s. I get Again, I'll get into that in a second. So, back my info real quick. Following the success of Born Into The 90s as the member of the R&B group Public Announcement, there you go. So that's the other album he did, but he did it as a part of a group called Public Announcement, Born Into The 90s. Kelly began touring as an opening act for Gerald LeVert and Glenn Jones. I don't remember who Glenn Jones is, but anywho, during the tour, Kelly said that he became frustrated with the poor lighting and empty seats during his set. To generate more attention during his set, Kelly began thinking of what would be his gimmick to take his show to the next level, something that would make people remember him. Kelly stated, and I quote here, I thought all, I mean, I thought about it for a couple of days, and I finally came up with a little skit, me just talking to the audience. At the point in the show where I would break down, hey love, I would start talking to the audience, end quote. And I guess this is like some of the things he would say. So he would say, as I quote here, can I tell you all something? Can I keep it real? Can I tell you about a dream I had last night? where I actually had a dream where I made love to Mary J. Blige. Hey, it was only a dream, but it was so vivid. It felt real. But in this dream, it was more than foreplay. It was trail play. Can I sing it for y'all? Tell you how it went? Okay, end quote with that. The audience yelled yes, and Kelly's piano player accompanied him with chords. Kelly then began to count down one, and I quote here, one, we'll go to my room of fun. The trail play gimmick began so big, or became rather so big, that when Kelly went to radio station to promote Born Into The 90s, the DJ wanted to hear trail play. The demand for trail play was so big that R. Kelly decided to create an album titled Trail Play. Kelly let us later said, and I quote, I didn't really know if the album would be as successful as it had been, but I only, but I hoped that it would. I was really taking a chance with the concept of the album, end quote. And that's Kelly in the concept of the Trail Play album. So that was done, that interview was done in 94. So, let's look at the certifications and the charts real quick. So this joint was 66 on the Dutch album charts, so album top 100. Trail up in the UK album charts, number two in the US Billboard 200, and number one in the US top RB slash it by albums charts. And yeah, that's all of the charts right there. And it did get some certifications. It was gold in Canada with 50,000 copies sold, silver in England with 60,000 copies gold, and it was six time platinum in the US with six million copies sold. So that's pretty crazy. That's a pretty good debut album, I do say so myself. All right, so there's, okay, here's where things gonna get a little bit confusing. Okay, so, okay. So first of all, there's 12 tracks on here. However, there are 13 songs. So one of the tracks have two songs in it. Okay. So with that out the way, let me give you guys the tracks real quick. The first track, and there's no skits. But unfortunately, I can still give you a top three, not a top five. The first track is called Your Body's Calling. There's no G at the end, you know, calling, C-A-L-L-I-N apostrophe. So yeah, that's the first track, which is actually one of the four singles off this album. Oh, and here's another single. Track number two, Bump and Grind. We all should know about that one. Track number three, Homie Love a Friend. Hmm, I, we heard that quote a lot in through his songs. But moving on. Track number four, It Seems Like You're Ready. You would think that would be a single, but not really. But we get more, there's a little bit of info on that song. We get more of that later. Track number five, Freak That Body. D-A-T as in that, not T-H-A-T. Track number six is called, 
I like the crouch on you. And I'll explain more of that track. Actually, I can explain it in a second. So within that track, there's an intermission that begins at the four or six months. The track is six minutes and 38 seconds long, by the way. Track number seven is another single called Summer Bunnies, followed by For You, then Back to the Hood of Things. Then track number 10 is called Sadie. And there's a little bit of info behind that song. Then track number 11. This is the one with the two songs. And this is actually a single. Sex Me Part 1 and Sex Me Part 2. Part 2 begins at the 457 mark. The track as a whole is 11 minutes and 28 seconds long. And then track number 12 is called Trail Play, but it's printed as a bunch of dots in the Lena notes. So there you go with that. Now, there are some tracks on here where, Art, where it, you know, somebody's rapping. So all the tracks were written by R. Kelly except for Sadie, which was done by Joseph B. Jefferson, Bruce Halls, and Charles Simmons. So, okay, so I guess Kelly was the only one rapping in all those other songs. So, yeah, there you go with that. All right, so let's get on with the single. So the first single, again, this is the one right here, Sexy. So this joint came out August 6, 1993. And I believe, yeah, this is part one. Oh, and here's something interesting. Not only there's a music video for part one, but there's also a music video for part two as well. So that's interesting as well. And then there's a short version for part one and a short version for part two. So, and... I don't see any charts, which is very interesting. So, yeah, let me check that out real quick. But, yeah, again, I didn't know there was a music video for part two. So, that's news to me right there. So, there's a music video for part two as well. And in terms of sex, me, it actually got a certification. It was gold in the U.S. And it also made the charts. It was 20th on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 charts, and it was eighth on the U.S. Top R.B. slash Hip Hop Songs charts as well, and it was 75th on the U.K. Singles charts as well. So there you go with that. So that was Sex Me. Next up on the list is Bump and Grind. So here's the deal with Bump and Grind. So this joint came out January 25th, 1994, and it was recorded in 1993 and in 1994. Now, there's two different remixes for this song. We'll get more on that in a second. Okay, so there's actually a grand total of three. I can get to it right now. There's three versions of Bump and Grind. So you got the original album version. So, you know, the one that we all familiar with, with the whole, I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. That one. That's the original. And then there's two remixes. And I'll explain what they are in a second. So, actually, right now, actually. So, the first remix was called the Old School Remix. Now, this is the one. This is arguably my all-time favorite R. R Kelly song. So, this is the one where it goes, I don't see nothing wrong. So, that one. That one is called the Old School Remix. Now, and then the third one is the How I Feel, wait a minute, How I Feel It Extended Mix, which is based off the original version, but how the hook is sang was slightly different, but it's still basically the standard version of the original. So that's basically what it is. So the music video does not feature the famous intro. It is also black and white, and it's feeling like a live concert performance. Now, I was watching that music video. Now, this is for the original. I'm not, I want to say there was a music video for the remix, but I am not 100% sure on that. So, let's take a look at the chart. So, this joint was 82nd out in Australia, 26th in Ireland, 49th in New Zealand, 8th in the UK singles charts, number one in the following US Billboard Hot 100, US Hot Dance Music slash Maxi Single Sales Chart. Uh, I wouldn't call that a dance song, but let's slow dance, I guess. Moving on. Number one in the U.S. Hot R&B slash hip-hop song charts in the U.S. And number one in the U.S. Whitmiss charts as well. And it was 24th on the U.S. Mainstream Top 40. Now, that was 94 to 95. It was 92nd on the U.K. single charts in 2013. That's crazy. And by the end of the year 1994, it was 11th on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 and number one on the U.S. Billboard R&B slash hip hop charts as well and by the end of the decade 1999 it was 55th on the US Billboard Hot 100 so obviously this was a very good song and it got some certifications it was silver in the UK with 200,000 copies sold now this is going to be interesting it was platinum in the US with 1.2 million copies sold and it was gold on the US Master Tone region I guess wherever that is that's going to be with 500,000 copies sold as well and 
yeah, there you go with that. So, and then there was a, uh, what do you call this? I guess another remix or like a cover. So basically, there was a bump and grind 2014 song that was done by the British house duo. Ooh, I don't know how you pronounce this. Uh, Raze, W A Z E, Raze, Raze, and Odyssey. And they produced a bootleg of the track back in 2002, sampling "Push the Feeling On" by Nightcrawlers. And this remix was released on October 19, 2014. And basically, they called it Raze or Raze and Odyssey versus R. Kelly. And this was Bumpy Grind 2014. Now, and apparently there was a music video. I'm not going to read the charts because it, it's, it's a bit of a read. So I'm not going to get into the charts. So let's move on to the next song. Your, or a singer, rather. Your Body's Calling. Again, y'all should be familiar with that as well. Joint came out March 11, 1994. And, ooh, there was a remix to this. I had no clue there was a remix to this. So that's very interesting. And here's a little, ooh, this is interesting. So... On the remix, though, the remix was released as a B-side to the single, featuring his protege at the time, Aaliyah. And the remix is called Your Body's Calling His and Hers with Mix, rather. So that's interesting. Also, Norman Brown covered the song in 1996 in his album, Better Days Ahead. And that was very interesting. All that's very interesting. And the song has been sampled by Houdini on the song Be My Lady, also featuring Kelly from their album Six. And there's a music video for this as well. And let's take a look at the charts. It was 19th in the UK singles charts. It was 43rd in the New Zealand singles charts. 13th in the US Billboard Hot 100. 4th in the US Billboard Hot Dance Music Slash Maxi Single Sales charts. Again, unless it's a slow dance, I guess, whatever. Third in the US Billboard Rip Mid Top 40 charts and second in the US Billboard Hot RB slash hip hop singles and tracks charts. By the end of the year 1994, it was 64th in the US Billboard Hot 100 and 9th in the US Billboard RB slash hip hop charts. Now let's move on to the next single, which is called Summer Bunnies. So this joint came out July 28, 1994. I will admit, I had no clue that this was a single, to be honest. And let's see, the song heavily samples the 1982 Gap Band song Outstanding. And there's a remix for this, and guess what? It features Aaliyah again, which samples the 1970s song, the, where the spinner hit song, rather, is a shame. And there was a music video that was shot for the remix featuring Aaliyah, which is called the Summer Bunny Contest Remix, which is interesting. And let's take a look at the single itself. It was 23rd on the UK singles charts, 55th on the US Billboard Hot 100, 20th on the US Hot Dance Music Slash Maxi Single Sales charts again. Okay, I ain't gonna question that one. 20th on the US Billboard Whitman Top 40, and 20th on the US Billboard Hot RB Slash Hip Hop Singles and Track charts. I think I said 27 on the Whitman Top 40. My bad if I didn't. And then the fourth, okay, so that's all four singles. Now, a little info on the other song, It Seems Like You're Ready. Again, another classic. So, everybody should be familiar with this as well. Now, again, it was not a single, but it did make the charts, which is crazy. It was 50, and this, yeah, it was 59 for the US Billboard Hot 100 Airplay, 29th in both the US Hot RB slash Hip Hop Songs charts, and the US Witness charts as well. And then the last song is Sadie. Now, Sadie, this is an actual, uh, R. Kelly actually covered this song, because it was originally done by the R.I.B. vocal group, The Spinners, who was known as Detroit Spinners in the UK. So the original version came out April 3rd, 1975 from the album New in the Pool, again by The Spinners. All right, Kelly did a sample, uh, not a cover, a cover of this song, rather, and it was a tribute to his mother, Joanne Kelly, who died earlier that year as the album dropped. So that's pretty interesting as well. All right, so now let me give you guys my favorite tracks off this album from what's the first. For You is the worst track off this album. The snare was okay, the kick is straight, the melody is straight, the bass is cool, the overall the track is, is just straight. Summer Bunnies, it sounds like something used for an R&B group, is a tad bit happy too lucky for my taste, but the melody is still cool nevertheless. Drums are cool, overall the track is cool. Sadie, I really like the snare here, the kick is really cool, melody is cool, bass is cool, and the track is cool. Freak That Body. I really like the tempo of this one. The drums are really cool. The bass is cool. Melody sounds off on the hook, though, but the track is cool. There was a lot of potential because of that hook. If that hook didn't sound like that, it would be much higher on this list. And R. Kelly is rapping on this one. I like the crowd for you. I like the tempo here. The drums are really cool. Bass is cool. Melody is straight, though. Overall, uh, overall rather, the track is cool. Sex Me Part 2. So I'm reviewing those songs separately, not as one whole track. Ever. 
The melody is almost at the same as part one, so it's cool. I like the kick here, but the snare is straight, no bass, and the track is cool. Trail play. I like the melody for the hook more so than the verses, actually. The melody for the verse, actually. Or verses. But the melody do sound a little bit like Bump and Grind, the original, obviously. Bass is cool, though, and the snare is unique, but cool nevertheless. Kick is cool, and overall the track is cool. Back to the hood of things. Really like the bass here. The snare is really cool. Rest of the drums are cool. Really like the tempo, the melody is cool, track is cool, and it's in. even though Kelly is rapping again, he do sound like Dr. Dre in this one, which is pretty funny. Your body's calling. I like the drums here, the melody is cool, bass is cool, track is cool, and then the fourth best song of this album is Sex Me Part 1, which is a classic rap question. The snare is really cool, the rest of the drums are cool, melody is cool, bass is cool, track is cool. The best track of this album is Bump and Grind. Really like the snare here, the kick is cool, Melody is cool, the track is cool. I will let you, again, the old school remix is so much better. It is, unfortunately, it's not a part of this album, but the old school remix is so much better. That is one of, if not my all time favorite RB, uh, not RB, but R. Kelly song ever. Second best track off this album is Homie Love and Friend. Really like the temper here, the snare is cool, really like the kick. The melody is really cool, and Kelly raps in this one. The track is really cool. And, of course, number one, it seems like you're ready. This, uh, this is another one of my all-time favorite R. Kelly songs right here. Really like the snare. Really like the kick. The melody is dope, and the track is excellent. All right. So let me give you guys some professional ratings. All Music, wow, gave it five out of five stars. The Baltimore Sun gave me the mixed review. BBC Online gave me a favorable review. Chicago Trinity gave it a two and a half out of four stars. Robert Chris Gall gave it a C plus. Entertainment Weekly gave it a C minus. LA Times gave it two out of four stars. Rolling Stones gave it three and a half out of five stars. Vir uh, Virgin Encyclopedia gave it four out of five stars. I almost said Virginia. And Yahoo Music, for ooh, that's the first one, gave it a favorable review. So what do I think about this album? Okay. So I will admit, there's like uh, not a lot of R, R. R. Kelly albums that I heard. The only one that I remember hearing is uh tp2 but outside and obviously i heard this one but uh tp2.com that's the one i heard and i'm not counting the best of both world or unfinished business but yeah that was like the only r kelly album that i heard actually that's the r only r kelly album that i own actually so it's hard for me to say what is his best r you know what's his best album but Trail Play was pretty good. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5 stars. I recommend you download it and you keep it. There's some classic songs in this album. Again, it seems like you're ready. Bump and Grind, the original version is really cool. Homie Lover, Homie Lover Friend Rider, really cool. Sex Me Part 1 is good. There, there's a number of good tracks on here. Uh, you know, nothing that really stands outside from it. Seems like you're ready. Homie Lover Friend and Bump and Grind Part 1. And if you want to put in uh, Sex Me Part 1, that's cool too. That's a classic real question. So 4 out of 5 stars, I recommend you download it and you keep it. So I'm about to call it a wrap. So we're going to review TP2.com next week. Since that's the album that I actually own. So with that said, y'all know who this is. This is the New Jack Aspie, a.k.a. the new Steam Day Smith. Saying peace out, y'all. And I'll see y'all next time. Yeah.